Good evening, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, I had to get this video out to you, so you'll notice different lighting. The lighting's different because it's not the daytime when I'm making this video. It's uh, almost 9.30 in Ontario. And I felt driven to make one more video to share something with you because I've already shared with you some ideas about waking, dreaming, and deep sleep, and those different parts of our lifetime experience or day experience. Every single day, this is what we all experience. And I wanted to make sure that we're thinking about what is part of us throughout all of that time. And of course, I want to touch on meditation a little bit tonight. So meditation is going to be something that uh, I'm going to be speaking more about in this series of videos too. But of course, you know, it's part of the work that I do. And it's certainly something that I encourage people to try or to regularly try. I think sometimes when people are doing meditation, they think I'll oh, give it a try and then I can't calm my mind. So uh, that's not good. It, it doesn't work for me. I can't stop the thoughts. And then a lot of people start working with meditation to stop thoughts. And I thought I would let you know how ancient scripture is perceiving meditation and contemplation. And I wanted to bring it back to this waking uh, dream and deep sleep state. And when we think about these three states, I just wanted to bring your attention to in our waking state, I think I've already said this in a different video, but remember that in our waking state, we're very attached to our senses. And we're attached to all of the, well, the things we see, the things we smell, the things we hear, things we speak, things we eat uh, or want to eat, and um, certainly the things that uh, we touch too, right? So all of these senses are very dominant in our waking state. What else is dominant is our thoughts, right? So our intellect is really involved um, in many of the things. So even if we've got none of the senses <clears throat> really participating. If we're just sitting and thinking, we think, oh, I think I'm going to see this person today and they didn't treat me very well last time. So I don't feel so good. Or I've got a doctor's appointment today and I'm a little bit nervous about it. So that always makes me feel a little bit uh, queasy to my stomach. Whichever way we are constantly <clears throat> thinking and acting in our day-to-day um, -day experience of our waking life, based on all of these senses and awarenesses in these ways most often. And I thought I would make sure that you know some of the reasons that people move into meditation and move into things like reading scripture or um, understanding philosophy or contemplating or going within to try to understand themselves. And really that is what meditation is most useful for is about knowing ourselves. And the goal, as many people may know, for people who are seekers or seers or sages or um, looking at gaining wisdom, any of these people are drawn to this because of this true desire to free ourselves from the enslavement of our own mind. So, of course, the word bondage is often used and um, bondage is slavery, right? So this Slavery that we're talking about in um, enlightenment or in freedom from this experience is this awareness that, yeah, our minds, our thoughts, our experiences, our senses are shaping us so much. They're taking over our lives. So it's what we have to do. It's what we have to um, be responsible for. It's what we feel, what we should feel, we shouldn't feel. There's all the likes and dislikes are in that. And we realize that the mind really can be so caught up in all of these thoughts every single day. Now, when we go to sleep and if we're in dream state, we know that we're kind of free of the body at that time, right? So in terms of we're not free because we're in bed, but we're free of the body, right? So we're mostly, we're not really moving our body. Some people move their bodies more than others. So some people have things like restless leg syndrome, some people will have a cramp that comes up in the middle of the night. So somehow the body might be involved. Most of the time when someone is uh, in dream state, 
they're not really utilizing their body and they're not utilizing their senses even though the mind is being used because it's our mind that's feeling that we're seeing something in a dream or that we're experiencing something. We might even smell something. We might taste something in a dream, but we're not actually using our sense organs for this, right? We're just having our mind perceive this in a dream state. And so we're free from the body, but not really free from the mind and intellect. And then we go into deep sleep. And in that time, we don't feel anything, right? So there's there's nothing, but when we wake up from deep sleep, we're quite aware that, wow, that was refreshing, right? That That's that experience that we feel, that it was a freedom from the body and the mind and intellect, right? So all three of those, there's a freedom of that in deep sleep. And I thought I'd try to make sure that you remember that there's another time for that sort of freedom, which is what can happen in meditation, which is why it's such a beautiful space. It is free of all of those senses, all of those thoughts, all of that participation that takes up <clears throat> so much of our energy in a day-to-day -day experience that it really is very freeing. And it's a phenomenal experience. I, again, I have had so many beautiful experiences through meditative time. And I do know that clearing up our mental space that way really does allow some spiritual energy to come to us. And if we're ready to receive that energy, there are amazing things that can happen in our lives. <clears throat> so this evening, this evening, that was what was on my mind. So <laughs> I guess you can see I was thinking. So I was using my mind because I'm awake. And I have to say that in that contemplation, <clears throat> I thought it would be a great thing for you to recognize that uh, tonight when you're going to sleep, maybe just before you go to sleep, welcome, welcome a deep sleep for your system. Welcome that freedom to your system. You'll also be free if you're having dreams in your sleep and in that dream state, you know that you're free from the body. So that's a little bit less energy. And when you're free from the mind and the intellect and that sort of participation, you really are very, very close to the meditative space. Meditation, of course, is being an alert presence. So you're actually participating yet not participating. So in this, we are alert, we are awake, awake in our awareness, not awake. We are awake, we are awake and we're meditating, right? So if we're awake and we're meditating, we are choosing to dissociate from that bondage of the mind and the senses. And this is a beautiful experience. I came across uh, a lecture that I was listening to had a wonderful um, use of the word meditation. So they used it as an acronym and I had to write it down because it really is the experience. So I used meditation defined as an acronym, mind engaged deeply in total awareness transcending its own nature. It's the mind engaged deeply in total awareness, transcending its own nature. So remember the nature of the mind is to think, right? So if we are detaching from that, we are transcending its own nature, right? So this is such a beautiful experience. I hope you do experience it, but I also know that at least in Ontario, it's nighttime and people might be heading to bed sometime soon. And if you can anticipate that, yeah, you know what? I'm going to get that deep sleep. I am going to welcome that deep sleep. I know there's so many people, especially with the concerns of our day-to-day -day life these days all around the world, there's a lot of mental activity going on. So even more than what people are used to, and we're used to a lot of thinking. So right now we're thinking there's also emotions that are contributing to the thoughts too, right? So we're feeling sorry or worried or scared because so much of that energy is around us. And tonight, if you can think that I'm welcoming deep sleep to be able to transcend this, this experience with the mind and its busyness. I wish that for you and I hope you have a fantastic night of sleep, of deep sleep. And I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone. Or a great night. <laughs>